what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and in this one i'm going to be talking about what's going on with the overall market and what you should be watching for moving forward i'm going to talk about spy and tesla and qqq and many other tickers out there like meta in nvidia and talk about the dead ceiling and what's going on with some fed speakers and the news that just came out before i break down about all of this information before i talk about what's going on with the options chain for spy and what's happening with the price action i do have to mention a couple of things before starting Personally, I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is that it could be a free Tesla share. The offer ends in just a couple of weeks. Check it out before they run out. But that's out of the way. Let's get on with the video. So in the morning, the market had some very, very choppy looking indicators. And I was anticipating that the market would just remain choppy for quite some time in the very beginning. Then I warned you guys about the PMI reports coming out at about 9.45 a.m. and then 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And I told you guys we should be expecting a big move in either direction and to watch for confirmation. And as a result, we got a confirmation uh, to the upside right the market broke some very important resistance and it continued to pump it held above 420 quite nicely and that was a very very bullish signal and we continued to pump from there moving forward we broke 421 and now we saw a close around 421.82 and the next important level is going to be 422.99 to 422.92 around that zone and if we get a break and hold above that the market has a lot more potential to keep going but I want to break down something else that's going on for tomorrow. So like, sure, the market's looking very nice and strong, but you should always be open-minded and careful in markets like this. And that's despite how bullish things could be looking, whether you're looking at like Tesla and the others, here are some things you need to know. For tomorrow, okay, look at the options chain on SPY for tomorrow. Uh, we have about under about half a million calls expiring. And we have over 1.3 million puts expiring. Max pain's at 416, and we have a 2.8 put to call ratio. The price is 1.4% above max pain. So it's in a pretty decent place already for the market makers to close us. But there is a chance they may continue to squeeze shorts, but that's going to depend heavily on the debt ceiling news and what's happening with the unemployment data. However, if I were a market maker, I would hold the market very close to where we are and, and possibly just pump the market even harder just so that even more of the shorts could just start covering their positions and just so that they could make even more money if they are holding positions on the opposite side, right? Because obviously when all of these puts are basically owned by individuals or institutions or et cetera, someone had to have sold them to them. So if you're selling a put on the opposite side, it benefits you to pump the markets and they had to hedge beforehand anyway. So they're hedged anyways, regardless of what happens. But the bottom line is, the market makers are incentivized to try to hold the market close to the levels we're currently at or pump us even more. They do not want to see SPY break below 416 or even crash. They're going to try their best to hold us up. The only downside to this uh, claim would be the puts being very extreme. And you could argue that maybe these shorts are just so angry they're going to try to fight and you know bring the market down. That's a possibility too. But you know, looking at the current price action, the odds do favor the bulls big time but we should always be open-minded just in case now for earnings we had dell announcing earnings today uh we saw uh dell do quite well they beat on eps and revenue they did very very well from that end and that's a good sign for tech the reason why the market is able to pump the way it has been or at least one of the main reasons would be earnings apple had earnings apple's earnings was not necessarily horrible they did relatively well tesla did well too in its earnings it's just that their margins weren't the best and then we had nvidia very very strong earnings and tech continued to give us relatively good earnings much better than some people's expectations and that's part of why we're still seeing the market at these higher levels and that was despite all the negative claims that were being made initial jobless claims has come out and this came out in the morning the market didn't really respond too negatively to this uh, it was very close to expectations, but there is still too much strength in the jobs market for the Fed's liking. And Jerome Powell often talks about how we may not see a massive spike in unemployment to bring down inflation, but historically, that's not what tends to happen. For now, we'll just have to watch the data carefully, as we saw Harker from the Fed speaking about today. And he mentioned that there could be a recession coming in the future as a possibility, but he doesn't see it happening this year. 
and he said the Fed is inclined to skip a rate hike in June. He also mentioned, though, that the Fed uh, funds rate may not reach its terminal rate or the final highest peak yet by June, so he implied there could be future rate hikes as well. But he mentioned that if there is some kind of event, and as long as inflation starts dropping, that's going to look very good for their policies, and they may continue. Uh, they could even cut sooner than expected. That's a real possibility. Besides that, nothing he said was very out of the ordinary. Finally, let me just add the big data for tomorrow, one hour before the market opens. We have the unemployment rate, non-farm payrolls, the labor force participation rate, and many other very important factors. The data involving labor and unemployment is going to be super important. We have all these different things coming out, manufacturing payrolls, you know, governmental payrolls, a bunch of them. Super important stuff. This is going to move the market a lot, in my opinion. So make sure you're ready for this. Be prepared for either direction. And finally, another thing that's pretty huge would be the Senate alongside their moves when it comes to the debt ceiling. The Senate has received the debt ceiling bill after the House passed it uh, just yesterday. This is important because Chuck Schumer came out and he said, once again, the Senate may end up finishing this as soon as tonight. They may get a vote as soon as tonight. They're going to try to move everything quickly. And the deadline would be as soon as Monday, according to Janet Yellen. That's the same date that McCarthy uh, stressed as being very important to meet. And it's likely that they're going to try to do something as soon as possible. Now, if they do successfully pass this bill, if they get a positive vote on it, this could be bullish for the stock market. If they don't do it and they delay it, maybe the market's not going to be as bullish. Uh, it still could squeeze on other things, but I just want to note that this is very important. Once the news comes out by tonight, if they do get the vote in, that's going to cause a big move. And I will be able to tell you about that tomorrow morning. Now let's talk about these charts. What am I seeing on SPY? Well, there's a bullish and bearish case because once again, I can't really uh, predict the unemployment data. I don't know exactly what it's going to you know, look like. Uh, but it's best to be prepared for either direction, but I just want to note that the technicals are looking very bullish on the hourly, the four-hour time frame, and many other time frames. But let me go over the bullish and bearish cases for most of these tickers and then talk about what I think is more likely, all right? The bullish case for SPY would be a break and hold above 422.99. That's around like 423. If we could break and hold 423, it's not going to stop there, in my opinion. It's going to fly all the way up closer to like 426. There's some resistance right here in this zone between 425 to 426. I'd be leaning more towards like 426. If it breaks that even, then we have like 427.5 followed by 430. And this is going to be some major resistance, right? This is where we got rejected the last time uh, during the last super big rally in like August of 2022. That's a very, very high uh, point the market would be reaching. Now, where am I leaning towards? I am leaning more towards the bulls in this, looking at these technical signals. I mean, there's no clear sign of the market just getting ready to tank. And but I'm always going to be prepared nonetheless, right? If you're bearish on the markets, okay, you're going to be watching 420. 420, very carefully. This is a very important support. If that fails, it's on the one-hour time frame. Watch the 50 EMA around 419.28. If that fails, we have this imbalance around 418.06. This is very important too. Because if 419 fails, the algos are going to be attracted to this zone right here to start selling. And they're going to do this because of this imbalance that formed, right? In the price action, in the, in the net volume, excuse me. And then if that fails us, we have the 200 EMA even lower. I don't see us dropping that hard unless something you know horrendous happens. I just don't see it. And overall, I'm leaning more in favor of the bulls, but I'm always prepared for anything. I think there's a good chance we're going to try to fight 423 and continue pushing. And we might see another short squeeze. Now for Tesla... Uh, Tesla did something very interesting. It broke 207 temporarily. Uh, it pushed up to about 209.8. And we have this resistance now between 209.8 to about 210. So around the 210 zone. And overall, it's looking quite nice. Tesla showed very little weakness today. And overall, it's looking strong. Now, there's a bullish and bearish case. I mean, if Tesla does pump more, which I think it likely will, we have to break 208.5, break and hold that. And then the resistance there is not very strong. The strong resistance is closer to like the 210 zone. Break 210, I'm going to be watching 212.5 followed by 214. These are two important levels, especially 214. If that breaks, we have some major resistance right here around this uh, 216.64 to about 217.83 zone. 
I know it's quite a zone that's relatively large, but this is where Tesla saw a lot of chop and rejections in the past. So we're going to be watching closer to like the 217s if it breaks 214. And though that's like the more bullish case. The more bearish case would be a retest of like, uh, if 207.5 fails us, there's going to be 207 flats. And if that fails us, it's going to make its way down to 205 to 204. Support here is going to be relatively strong as we saw this uh, previously being resistance. And then finally, if 204 fails us, then we have 202, 200, and then also where the 50 EMA happens to be on the hourly. Now, I'm prepared for anything because of the unemployment data, okay? And also because of the, you know, debt ceiling. But I'm leaning more bullish on Tesla. And I think the odds favor trying to break above 210 and make its way up above the 212s, if not even higher. I'm leaning more in that direction, but I'm always going to be open-minded just in case something unexpected happens. For the QQQ, we're going to be watching resistance at 353 to 354. Break that zone, then we're going to be, we're going to be watching uh, 355.46. Break that, then we have 358, then 360. For bearish, uh, watch a retest. Well, it has to break below 352. We're currently just barely above it. The after hours as well, we're above it quite nicely. If it breaks below 352, we're going to be watching 350. If that fails us, 348.5. And if that fails us, there's 346.66. Those are the zones to watch for as support. I'm leaning more bullish. Uh, I know it's a little bit overbought, so it could cool off. And it does have a small bearish divergence. So it might cool off a little bit in the pre-market and then try to bounce. But I'm leaning more towards it trying to fight and break 354. I think the QQQ has a decent chance of doing that. HYG is looking pretty decent right now. We're seeing a lot of buyers stepping in and formed uh, this very nice looking a setup in the very beginning it did not get you know stopped out by the major top right here uh, it looks like it could have a little bit more room to keep going especially because of this gap right here if it fills this gap all the way up here this could be a bullish signal as the bonds traders could still be buying a little bit more let me add that for forward just real quick if we're bullish we're gonna be watching 12.21 if it breaks that we have this imbalance all the way up to a 12.5 then there's 12.65 followed by 12.8 and 13. For bearish on Ford, we're going to be watching 11.89, followed by 11.75, and then the 11.33. I'm leaning more bullish on it, just based off what's happening so far. For NEO, there's a bullish divergence. Uh, the odds favorite pushing all the way up to about 7. First, it has to break 7.65. If it breaks that, we're going to be watching 7.83. Uh, there's a bullish divergence, but the problem with NEO is their deliveries just were not very good. There's a chance it could end up dropping anyways because of that, but I'm still looking at this from a technical standpoint. From technicals, it looks more bullish, uh, despite the bad delivery numbers. And if it does break down below 7.5, watch this 7.26 imbalance level, followed by $7. I'm still leaning a little bit more bullish, though, from a technical standpoint. For the NASDAQ, this is holding up nicely. Uh, it has this resistance around 13,000. 154. If it breaks above that, there's 13,250 that could be tested. And we could make our way closer to about 13,400 if we continue to break to the upside. If we break down, watch support around the 50 EMA. And that is going to be around 12,863. I'm leaning more bullish on this. I mean, looking at this from a technical standpoint, we just got a bullish cross on the PPO. The odds favor it pushing more. SPX is above 4,200. Once again, pushing up nicely. I'm seeing a potential divergence that could be forming, maybe a bearish divergence right here. Which means it may cool off a little bit in the morning. Maybe it gaps down and then just keeps pushing uh, when, by the time it opens and then it just starts pushing afterwards. That's another possibility. Uh, if it's bearish, watch the 50 EMA. If we're bullish, we're going to be watching it get closer to about 42.60, followed by it potentially reaching 4,300 if it turns very bullish. That's also very possible. Just watch that carefully. Those are the two zones to look at. The VIX is down 12%. That tends to not be the best. I mean, typically when this happens within one or two days, you know, the VIX is going to make a big move to the upside. Uh, but for now, there's no sign of the VIX balancing. It's barely at, uh, you know, some support at 15.58. But it's still getting closer to where this, like, falling wedge has been over the last couple of uh, months. And still back into it. And the next major support is going to be 15 flat on it. So, Maybe, I mean, there's no sign of this thing balancing yet, right? So it looks like it, it's still looking bearish to me. And it looks like it may continue to drop because of the market pumping. But once again, be very careful because one red flag would be the fact that it's down almost 13%. When the VIX is down more than 10%, we tend to see an opposite reaction either the next day or within two trading days, typically. HYG, uh, it's down 
not HYG, SQQQ, sorry about that. Uh, the SQQQ is not really doing anything out of the ordinary. It's near some support around 21.95, and then we have 21.77. It's still looking bearish. There's no sign of a bounce yet, and if it continues to drop like this, right, this is because of the QQQ pumping. There's no sign of the QQQ like dropping so far. Even the dollar is down to 103.5. No sign of the dollar bouncing yet. It is oversold, so it could try to bounce a little, but there's just not much else. It's just there's no sign of it bouncing yet, and it's going to likely make an attempt to bounce, meaning the market may slow down in the morning, but then it could always drop lower back to this next major support around the 103 flat area. If it hits 103, like I said, this could be bullish for the stock market. For Coinbase, if we're really bullish, 66 could get retested, followed by 68 and 70. For bearish, watch the 50 EMA because this is holding it quite nicely. It's been holding it for the last three days. The 50 EMA is around 61.5. If that fails us, then we have 59.6, which is where the 200 is. These are the support zones. The resistance is going to be 66. I'm leaning more towards it coming down to retest the 50, which is probably going to be closer to 62 by the time we open, and then trying to bounce off that. Uh, as far as, let's just look at Apple. My target on Apple was if it broke... 178 we're going to be watching it get closer to about 180 that's what i was looking for uh and so far apple has done that i don't know what's happening right now apple has been doing okay uh it got it closed around 180 just at the important level and now i'm going to be watching it retest 182.5 if it can break and hold 180 so far it's holding it quite nicely but it is a little bit overbought so i'd be careful with that uh there is also a small bearish divergence developing does not guarantee anything, right? Does not guarantee Apple has to like tank yet. Uh, could this be forming kind of like a slanted uh, inverse head and shoulder? That's a possibility, but I'm not really counting on that. It may cool off a little bit in the morning, maybe retest the high 170s, and then try to continue moving from there. There's not much of a sign of weakness on this thing. It's looking very strong so far. And for that reason, I mean, we just have to be open-minded. If we're bearish on Apple Watch, 178 that's going to be a major major support zone this 178 support and if that fails us watch the 50 ema around the 177s and then we have 176.5 after that for bullish 182.5 followed by 185 become very possible i'm leaning more in favor of the bulls but i'm going to be open-minded once again depending on the data for nvidia I told you guys NVIDIA is probably going to bounce. It would look pretty obvious in the morning. I told you it's either going to come down to, you know, retest one, 375 and then bounce, or it would just keep pumping from here. And it ended up just continuing to pump. It looked pretty obvious looking at the bullish divergence and the chart in itself. And now here's what I'm seeing for NVIDIA. I also told you guys during the intraday video, it's probably going to reach 400, and that's exactly where it went to. If it holds 400, okay, it's going to have to fight for 400 resistance. Then we're going to be watching 40 was this 402 then we have four this is like the next important zone 402 is going to be the first one the next one is around uh 40, 410 if it breaks 410 we're going to be watching it get all the way up to about 414 then 420. those are the more bullish cases the more bearish case would be a retest of 395 if that fails us there's 392 followed by 388 and then 385 as support and the major support is 375 to 377. I'm leaning more in favor of this thing cooling off a little bit in the morning for its RSI than continuing to try to pump. There's no sign of this thing just, you know, slowing down just yet. That's why I would be very open-minded. For Google, I told you guys if it managed to hold above 122, this thing had the potential to push up pretty nicely in approach 125. We hit 125, then we cooled off a bit. And overall, we're still looking pretty decent. If Google breaks 125, we're going to be watching 127, uh, 127 to 1275. Uh, if it ends up failing and coming down, watch 123 as support. If 123 fails us, the next major support is going to be 122.27. I am leaning a little bit more bullish. The hourly still looks bullish. There's no sign of this thing slowing down just yet. But always be patient just in case. Finally, for Amazon, if we're really bullish, watch this thing. Make an attempt to break and hold. 1 to 3.5 if it holds that it has the potential to get closer to 125. if we're bearish on amazon we're going to be watching it break below the low of the day or at least the low it made right here uh if it breaks below the 122 support it's going to come all the way down likely to 120.97 where our 50 happens to be 
and the odds favor that that's where it's going to try to bounce if it does come down because if it fails there then the next major support is going to be 118.5 followed by this imbalance zone around the 116 area very close to where the 200 ema is i'm leaning more towards amazon cooling off a little bit uh, it's looking not as strong as the market uh not extremely strong i mean uh, compared to its previous MACD and compared to the MACD of the SPY or whatever. And what I'm seeing is a slight cool up and then a potential break to the upside. And then we're going to be watching this resistance break so we could get closer to 125, depending on how tomorrow goes. For Meta, Meta is looking quite nice, no sign of weakness. I told you guys that Meta is bullish, watch 269, 270, and then also there's 275, and that's what Meta has done. It is slowing down and losing some momentum right here. Uh, if it's bearish, Meta is going to retest 270. If that fails us, there's 269. Then there's going to be 265, which is where the 50 happens to be. If we're bullish, we're going to be watching 275. If it breaks 275, it's basically going to get very close to the high 270s. 277.5 followed by 280 is what I'm, what I'm going to be watching. And I'm leaning more towards this thing cooling off a little bit in the morning. Once again, it is losing some momentum here. And it may try to continue pushing with the market. If the market squeezes more, we could see Meadow make it all the way up to 280. But this will depend on what happens tomorrow. And it's going to depend heavily on the data. All right, guys. So my bias right now, I am leaning more bullish based off this price action. But I'm not 100% fixated on the bullish outcomes. And the reason for that is because, right, we have the dead ceiling situation still coming out. We have so many other things that we have to look out for, the debt ceiling and all of that. But anyways, like I said before, I just want to thank each and every one of you all so much for listening. Please remain calm, cool, and collect and do what you have to do. Don't forget about the Moomoo link. The offer ends very soon. Deposit 100 bucks and you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks. And don't forget about the merch I have around the comments section. If you want to buy a shirt or tank up that says buy the dip or to the moon, it's really your choice. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Watch Support and Resistance, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the pre-market update. Tesla, SPY, the markets at the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright despite any short-term fluctuations. And peace out.